Now in this section, I'm going to walk you through the entire raft consensus algorithm for performing total order broadcast. Now I'm going to warn you, it's a rather complex algorithm. It's by far the most complex algorithm we will see in this course. Uh, it takes nine slides of pseudocode to explain the whole algorithm and I'm not expecting you to memorize it all. What I would like you to do though is to carefully understood and understand exactly how and why the algorithm works because I find that the principles of how the raft algorithm works are really instructive for thinking about state in a distributed system more generally. Okay, so let's start. The core of the raft algorithm is a state machine where every node can be in one of three states, either a follower, a candidate, or a leader. And it can all uh, the state is always in a certain term. So there's always a certain term number and a node can be the leader in a particular term. When a node starts off, for, starts up for the first time, it always goes into the follower state. And also if a node crashes and recovers, and then when the node restarts and recovers from the crash, it always goes back into the follower state, regardless of which state it was in before the crash. However, all of the nodes start as followers. Eventually we need some node to become the leader. And the way how a node becomes the leader is by first becoming a candidate. And so when a node detects that there has been no message from a leader for some amount of time, a timeout elapses and then a node will decide that, okay, it is going to stand as candidate in a particular term number. And it's within that term number, it's going to try to get votes from the other nodes. And if it manages to get uh, positive votes from a quorum of nodes in the system from a majority, then it is able to transition into the leader state. Um, however, it could also happen that in the process of this uh, election, the candidate discovers that there's a different node with a higher term number. And if it does so, then the candidate immediately steps back, becomes follower again, and uh, works with the, with the node that has the higher term number. So a higher term number always takes precedence. It could also happen while uh, a node is in the candidate state, it's doing the election, but maybe it's not able to communicate with a quorum of replicas right now, or a quorum of nodes, and so it times out. Uh, so it's, it simply doesn't receive a quorum of positive uh, votes within the required time, and if so, it will restart its election again with a higher time uh, term number. So it remains candidate and starts again with a higher term number. Uh, likewise, it could happen if the leader is, is just doing its leadering job, uh, it might discover that there's a node with a higher term number. Um, perhaps the system has been partitioned uh, so that some subset of nodes have elected a new leader with a higher term number in the meantime. And if so, the leader will always step back and become a follower again immediately upon discovering uh, some other node with a higher term number. So we always have a very peaceful transition of power in the raft algorithm. Uh, from the lower term number to the higher term number. So let's run through the actual code. And so here we start off um, with the usual initialization of variables. I'm not going to explain every single variable right now, but I will explain the variables as we use them as part of the algorithm. But I will just point out here the first four variables, current term, voted for, log, and commit length. These four variables have to be stored in stable storage, that is on disk. Whereas the remaining five variables, they can be in transient storage. They, they can be lost in the case of a crash. But uh, the, the first four variables have to be preserved in the case of a crash. And you can see the, the crash recovery here. So those uh, the five remaining variables simply get reset to, um, to new fresh states if, uh, if we recover from a crash. Now, as I said, uh, when a node suspects that the leader has failed, uh, it will become a candidate and it will start an election. That's what happens here. By the way, typically this timeout that the, that the node uses before it suspects an, a leader to have failed is randomized. And the purpose for that is to avoid having lots of nodes all trying to become candidate at the same time, which is what would happen if all the nodes start up at the same time and then have the same timeout before before they start an election. So randomizing the timeout reduces the probability of having several elections at the same time. Um, so whenever that happens now, so the a node decides it's time to start an election, it increments the current term, it sets its current role to be the candidate state. Uh, and like in every good election, everyone votes for themselves in an election, so also in raft. So 
the node that has just become a candidate votes for itself by setting this voted for variable to its own node ID. And it has this set of uh, node IDs in which it records the set of votes that it has received in favor of itself as a candidate. And it puts its own node ID as the first member of that set of votes received. This variable last term is initially zero, but you can see if the length of the log is greater than zero, then we set this last term variable. So let me explain first what the log is. So the log you can see illustrated up here is an array uh, or a list. It's a sequence of log entries. Each log entry consists of two parts. Firstly, a message. So this is the message that we want to deliver via total order broadcasts. Um, that's the whole thing that the, the purpose of the, of the algorithm. And secondly, a term number on every log entry. So this term number is the term number of the leader at the time when that leader added that particular entry to the log. And we'll see later why that term number is important. Um, but for now, just accept that log is this structure here. Uh, it's a zero, in, zero indexed array where log zero is the first, uh, the first log entry. And log.length is the number of log entries in, in the log. And if the log is non-empty here, if the log.length greater than zero, then we're going to say that the last term is the term field of the last log entry. So log.length minus one is the index of the last entry in the log. Um, and so we take the term field of that last log entry and set that to be the value of this variable last term. And we then construct a message that will be sent to all of the nodes. And so the, the candidate sends the same message to all of the nodes. It's a message tagged with the message type vote request saying, please vote for me. And the message contains the several fields. It contains the node ID of the candidate. It contains the current term after that term number has been incremented. It contains the length of the log on the candidate. And it contains this last term variable, which as I just said, is the term field of the last log entry in the candidate's log. It sends this same message to all of the nodes and it starts the timer that might eventually time out uh, if it doesn't manage to uh, do the election successfully. So that's the candidate. Let's see what happens on the other nodes that receive one of these wrote request messages. So now we're one of the other nodes that has received a, uh, a message from the candidate and we have the ID of the candidate, we have the term number of the candidate, uh, the length of the candidate's log, and the term number in the candidate's last log entry. And the first thing we're going to do when receiving a vote request message is to compare the candidate's term to the current term on, of the recipient of this message. And if the candidate's term is greater than the current term of the recipient, then we move forward and join the term of the candidate. So we do that by setting our setting the recipient's current term to be the candidate's term to transition into the follower state regardless of what the node's uh, previous state was. And this voted for variable gets set to null, which, say, which means that we have not yet voted for any, uh, any candidate in the current term because we just changed the current term. Um, however, we might vote for that candidate in a minute. So next we uh, set up this variable last term very similar to the way we did on the candidate. And that is we look at the last log entry on the recipient of this vote request message. We get the term number in that last log entry and we set that to be this um, last term variable. Now what we need to do is to check if the candidate's log is up to date with our own log. The reason for that is that we don't want a candidate with an outdated log for, to become the leader. Uh, and exactly what outdated means will become apparent later, um, but it's crucial that we want the uh, candidate's log to, uh, to reflect all the updates that the, that, the, that the other, that at least a quorum of other nodes have seen. So you don't end up with a leader uh, whose log is really outdated um, because that might lead to the loss of some messages. So, uh, we have this log OK variable here, which will contain a Boolean, which tells us whether we think that whether this, the current node thinks the candidate's log is OK to vote in favor of. And so there are two criteria here. First of all, if the log term of the candidate, so the, the log entry, the term number that appears in the last log entry of the candidate, if that term number is greater 
than the log entry, uh, the term number of the log entry on the recipient of this vote request message, then we consider the, the log to be okay. Secondly, another way for the log uh, to be okay is for the, the log terms in the last log entry to be the same, but for the candidate to have a log that is at least as long as the log of the recipient of this vote request message. So one of those things needs to be true, either or, and um, if so, then the log is okay. So we will now vote for this candidate if three criteria all hold. Firstly, if the candidate's term equals the current term, that is, it's not an, some outdated term, we haven't seen any other node with a higher term number. Secondly, if the candidate's log is okay. And thirdly, if we have not yet voted for any other uh, node, uh, any other candidate in the current term. Um, so this voted for variable would be null if we have not yet voted at all for any candidate in the current term. Uh, or it could be CID if uh, we've already voted for the same candidate. It's okay to vote several times for the same candidate in, in a single term, but we must not vote for two different candidates within the same term. So if all those three criteria are true, then we can vote in favor of this candidate. We will do that by first setting our voted for variables to CID to remember the fact that we have voted for the candidate. And then we send a vote response message uh, back to the candidate, and this is going to contain node ID of the node doing the vote. Uh, it's con going to contain the current term number, so we know which term this election is for, and the value true to indicate that it's a, a vote approval in favor of this candidate. On the other hand, if any of those things are not true, then we send uh, a vote response with a false uh, field back to the candidate, telling it that we are not voting in favor of this candidate. So now we move back to the candidate and we aggregate, we collect the votes that we receive. So any time we receive a vote response message, this is what happens. Um, so we have a vote response with the ID of the node that is voting, with the term number in which the vote is happening, and with a Boolean telling us whether that vote is granted or not. And the first thing we do is to check the term number. So if the term number in the vote response message is greater than our current term, we do the usual thing. We, up, we uh, ac accept that term number as our own. We transition into follower state. We forget which uh, node we voted for in some previous term and we cancel any election timer. So that just moves us back into the follower state in the state machine. However, if we are still in the candidate state and if the message uh, that we just received is for the correct term that in which we're performing the election, and the granted field is true, then we have a vote in favor of us as the candidate. So we're going to maintain this set of votes received here, and we're going to add the ID of the voter to the set of votes we received. Notice that this update here is idempotent, so even if this vote response message gets duplicated in the network somewhere, that's not a problem. We're not going to count the same vote more than once. We still require votes from a quorum of different nodes. So then to determine whether we have a quorum yet, we can uh, check the cardinality of this set votes received. And if the number of votes we received is greater than or equal to a majority, that is the number of nodes in the system plus one divided by two round upwards, then, um, then we have a quorum, a majority quorum of nodes. And at that point, we can become the leader, hurrah. So we transition to leader state. Uh, the current leader, well, that's ourselves now. We can cancel the election timer as well. And now we need to send a message to all of the nodes, which are now the followers, uh, to tell them, hey, we're, the new, we're your new leader, I'm your new leader, and uh, give it a bit of information. So this replicate log function here is going to do the actual sending of that message, and we will see that, that function in a minute. Um, we also need to set up for all of the followers some variables. These variables here, sent length and act length, are maps from node ID to an integer. And so for each of the follower nodes, uh, we're going to initialize these variables here. The sent length is going to be initialized with the length of the log on the leader. Um, and the meaning of sent length is the number of log records that we have already sent to a particular node. So here we are assuming that the follower has already received all of the log entries. Uh, from us. If that is not the case, we will correct that later through a process that we will see later. Uh, secondly, act length 
is the number of log entries counted from the beginning um, that the that this particular follower has acknowledged as having received. And we initialize that to be zero. And later, as we receive acknowledgments, we will increase that number. OK, so that's all we have to do to uh, become a leader. Now that we have a leader, we can actually start talking about the total order broadcast. So what we have here is now a, a function that can be called by a client, for example, to say, OK, we want to broadcast a message. Um, and we want to do that via total order broadcast, ensuring that all nodes deliver that the messages in the same order. Now, the order in which those messages are going to be delivered is, in fact, exactly the log. That's the whole purpose of the log. Um, and the only node that can add entries to the log is the leader. And so, first of all, the first thing we have to do is if the um, request to broadcast a message happens not on the leader, then it has to be forwarded to the current leader via a FIFO link. Um, using a FIFO link here just ensures that in total we actually get FIFO total order broadcast, not just total order broadcast. Um, that's the only thing we need to do in order to ensure the FIFO aspect. Um, if the current node is the leader, and we may have just received one of those forwarded requests to broadcast a message, well, the first thing we do is we append a record to the log uh, containing the message that we want to broadcast and containing the current term number of the leader. Um, we also note that the leader itself has acknowledged the delivery of this message. Um, that's just another instance of voting for ourselves. Um, so node idea here is the idea of the leader. And so we're just updating this act length variable to include the newly appended uh, record. Um, and now we call again this replicate log function that we already had on the last slide uh, for each of the followers, so all of the nodes in the system apart from the leader. Um, moreover, we also call this replicate log function periodically. So the leader, even if it doesn't have any uh, new messages appended to the log lately, it's still called replicate log for each of the followers uh, periodically. And the perp that has several purposes. One is to act as a kind of heartbeat. So it's uh, calling replicate log sends a message to the followers, just telling them that the leader is still alive. So they don't need to start a new leader election. Everything is fine. Um, this uh, calling replicate log also ensures that if any messages got lost, for example, then uh, they will get re-delivered. Uh, and it ensures that uh, if the leader has committed any log entries, then, um, then they will also be committed on the followers. Um, the process for committing will be we will see later. So let's have a look at this replicate log function that we've just seen called three times. Um, so this replicate log function gets called, first of all, with the node ID of the leader and the node ID of the follower. And we have access to all of the variables from before. So first of all, we are going to now split the log on the leader into a prefix and a suffix. The prefix will contain all of the log entries that we think we have already sent to the follower. And the suffix will contain all of the new log entries that we think we have not yet sent to this particular follower. And so we have this variable sent length here, which records for every a node ID the number of log entries that we think we have already sent there. And so this prefix length is just uh, an integer now. And now I'm going to take uh, the suffix of the log, which is starting at the uh, index prefix length and going all the way up to the end of the log. So all of the remaining log entries uh, after prefix length. It could happen that um, that prefix length is indeed the, the length of the entire log, in which case the suffix would just be an empty array. Next, uh, we set up this variable term, the uh, prefix term, and that is now going to be uh, looking at the log entries. We're going to look at the last log entry within the prefix and look at the term number of that log entry. Um, so this is a bit similar to what we had previously in the, in the vote request message. Uh, in this case, what we're looking at is not the last log entry in the log altogether, but the last log entry in the prefix and getting the, the term number of that. And we're now going to send a log request with all of these various variables um, to the follower. So we're going to indicate in the variable in the this message, we're going to include the ID of the leader, the term number in which it's a leader, 
the length of the prefix that we are not sending, the uh, term number of the last log entry in the prefix, the commit length, which is a variable that we will see later, that's just another integer, and then suffix, which is this array of new log entries that we want to add to the log. Okay, so that was how we send the log request. Now we're on the followers and we will see how to receive one of these log request messages. So we've got all of the variables that I just mentioned. And the first thing we need to do, as always, is to check the term number. And so if the term number in the message is greater than the term number on the follower, then we are going to do the usual state machine thing. We're going to accept the current term. We're going to forget what, uh, what candidate we voted for in the previous term. We're going to cancel election timer. And we will also fall through to this second if condition where we set the current role to be follower and we accept the current leader as being the, le the sender of this log request message. Um, so we fall through to this, this second case because here we update current term to equals term and so it still equals current term here in the second condition. The second condition is also here because it could happen that the node receiving the log request is actually a candidate in the same term number as the leader. And in that case, we also want to move into follower state, uh, even though we're not changing the term number, but we still want to accept the leader as uh, the, the sender of this, of this log request message as the leader. Okay, next thing we need to do is do another check if the log is okay. This is a bit similar to what happened earlier during the leader election, um, but the condition is a little different. So here, what we first of all want to ensure is, remember we said uh, in on the previous slide, we split the log into a prefix that we are not sending, which we assume the recipient already has, and a suffix which contains the new log entries. Well, first of all, we have to check that that prefix we actually do have as the as the sender of the message thought we might do. So first of all, we have to check that the follower's length of the log is at least as long as the prefix uh, that we left out on the sender. Uh, so if this is not the case, that means there would be a gap in the log where there's some log entries that the sender didn't send us, that the leader didn't send us, uh, but we also don't have on the follower. And so in that case, the log would not be okay. We have to fill in that gap first. The second requirement is uh, either the length of the prefix is zero, or if the prefix length is not zero, then we have to look at the last log entry in the prefix on the follower, look at its term number, and we want that term number to be equal to the, the corresponding log entries term number on the leader. This prefix term is just a variable that was sent as part of the message. So the purpose for this is Raft has a certain invariant that it guarantees. And that is if there are two nodes in the system that have a certain log and that at a certain index of the log, they have the same log entry. Uh, in particular, they have the same term number in that log entry. Then Raft will guarantee that the entire log up to and including that index will be identical. So the term number in the log entries actually allows us to tell efficiently whether two nodes have the same log or not. Because the only way that two nodes could end up with different logs is by having different uh, term numbers on a certain log entry. And uh, so what this here now guarantees is that if this log OK condition is true, that means that the prefix of, uh, of the log as it was on the leader is identical to the prefix of the log of the same length as it is on the follower. So this log OK condition checks that actually the, up to that point, the logs are identical. This is, uh, this is absolutely crucial for ensuring that actually every, all of the nodes end up with the same messages delivered. <clears throat> now, if this log is OK, and if the message was for the correct term, then we can go ahead and process the, uh, the new log entries that were in this log request message. And uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to call the append entries function that I will show you in a minute. And uh, we're going to pass it the suffix, the new log entries, and there are a few other variables. And we're going to also send an acknowledgement back to the leader saying, hey, we received your log entries, it's all fine. And this acknowledgement is going to be just another integer, and it's going to be 
uh, the integer is telling how many uh, log entries from the start of the log that we have successfully received from the leader. And that is going to be the length of the prefix that was not sent plus the number of lo log entries in the suffix that was sent. So that's the total number of log entries that we have from the leader after processing this message. And this ac uh, integer we're just going to pack into a message. So we're going to make a log response message that we send back to the leader. It's going to contain the ID of the sender of the log message, the current term number as always, uh, the act that I just explained, and true to indicate that this is a, this was, was successful, so the follower was successfully able to process this log request message. On the other hand, if something is not okay, so if the term number is wrong or if the log okay is false, then we send back a log response message in which the last element is false. And that tells the leader that we were not able to process that log request message correctly. Let's look at this append entries function that I just mentioned. So append entries here is called um, if we have checked that the log is okay and we want to append the new entries from the log request message to the follower's log. And so the first thing we now need to check is, well, it could be that the follower already has some of the log entries that are contained within this message. And if so, we need to check whether those are the same. So first of all, if the suffix uh, is non-empty, so that means the, the log request message did contain new log entries, and if the uh, length of the follower's log is longer than the prefix length, so that is the follower already has some log entries that go beyond the prefix. So at this point, we have the, the new, the suffix, the new log entries overlapping with the uh, log entries that the follower already has. In that case, we're going to find the last log entry that we can compare between the follower's state and the leader's state. And the last, is, that's going to be either the, uh, the length of the follower's log minus one, or it's going to be the length of the prefix plus the length of the suffix minus one, uh, whichever of those two is smaller. And that is going to be the index of the log entry that we're going to compare. And for that particular log entry, we're going for that particular index, we are going to compare uh, the term number in the follower's log to the term number in the corresponding entry in the suffix, in the new log entries that we received from the leader. And if those are not the same term number, that means we have an inconsistency in the log and we have to truncate the log. And so what we're going to do then is to actually keep only the length up, only the follower's log up to prefix length and everything beyond prefix length we're going to throw away. Uh, that is the correct thing to do here because those previous log entries might have come from a previous leader um, and they will not yet be committed. So a key property that uh, Raft ensures is that um, if a, a log entry is committed, then it will never change and it won't be discarded and it won't be removed by this truncation process here. Um, but a log entry that is not yet committed, it could happen that that log entry gets removed as part of this truncation. <clears throat> so if these term numbers are the same, then as, as I explained earlier, Raft guarantees that then the logs are identical up to that point, including that particular index. Uh, and in, in that case, we don't need to truncate the, the logs because we know that the leader's log and the follower's log are consistent with each other. Either way, regardless of whether we needed to truncate or not, we can now append uh, any new log entries to the log. And so we're going to, it could be now here that the suffix contains some log entries that the follower already has, in which case we don't need to append them again. And we're just going to start off with the first uh, the first entry in the suffix that the follower does not already have. And we go up to the last entry in the suffix and we append each of them to the follower's log. Now comes a variable called leader commit. I've not talked about this very much uh, yet, but this will become important now when we talk about committing log entries. So leader commit is just an integer and it tells us um, this, this leader commit variable, this came as part of the log request message from the leader. Commit length is a variable that is stored under follower and uh, it keeps track of how many log entries counted from the start of the log have we committed so far. 
And if the number of log entries that the leader has committed is greater than the log number of log entries that the follower has committed, that means more log entries are ready to be committed. So it's the leader that decides when a log entry can be committed by increasing this leader commit uh, variable. And so if this leader commit is greater, that means we can now take the indexes, st uh, the log indexes, um, starting from commit length and up all the way up to leader commit minus one, and those are ready to be committed. And to commit means here, first of all, we set the, the commit length to include those indexes, and also we deliver those messages to the application. So this is now the total order broadcast delivery as it happens on the followers. Um, the broad total order broadcast delivery on the leader happens separately uh, on the next slide. <clears throat> so that is the that is actually all that happens on the followers. So that's completed the story from the point of view of the followers. We just need to finish the story from the point of view of the leader. And so if you remember uh, here, the followers sent a log response message back to the leader, telling it whether it was whether the follower was able to accept the new log entries and append them to the log. And this is now when the leader receives those log response messages from the follower. And now the leader needs to decide which log entries are ready to be committed. So a log entry is ready to be committed if it's been acknowledged by a quorum of, uh, of nodes in the system. When the leader receives one of these log response messages, as always, when receiving a message, the first thing it has to do is check the term number. So if the term number in the log response message is greater than the leader's term, that means, oh, there's a new node with a higher term number. As always, uh, we have to accept that term number and transition to follower state, forget whoever we voted for in a previous term and cancel the election timer. However, in the case where the term number is correct, so the term number matches the leader's term number and the leader is in fact still the leader, then it can go ahead. Now, first it has to check, was the success field true? So this is the success field in the log response message that it received from the follower. And if this uh, success field is true, and if the acknowledgement that was contained in that message is at least uh, the number that was previously acknowledged by the same follower, that means the follower is acknowledging new messages now. You know, if the if the messages get delivered out of order, it could happen that uh, a high and a message with a higher ACK is delivered first, and then a message with a, a lower ACK later. So this uh, ensures that no matter in which order the messages are delivered, uh, everything ends up being fine. So in the expected case where the acknowledgement is greater than whatever the previous acknowledgement was, we can now record the the leader can now record the fact that it has received an acknowledgement from this particular follower. And it does this by updating both the sent length variable and the act length variable to be that integer that was just, uh, that is the number of acknowledged log entries from that particular follower. And it then calls the commit log entries function, which will be on the next slide, to actually decide which log entries are ready to be committed. Um, on the other hand, if it, this uh, log response was not successful, then we have to check the uh, sent length. And so if it was not successful, it could be that there was a gap in the log. So remember, we split the prefix, we split the log into a prefix and a suffix. The prefix we assumed the follower already has. But what if the follower lost part of its log and there's the, actually a gap and it doesn't have the entire prefix? That's the case that we handle here. So in this case, if the success was not true, then uh, the sent length variable uh, for the follower, we're just going to decrement that. So we're going to reduce it by one. And that means now we're going to shrink the length of the prefix by one. And we're going to send one more log entry to, to the follower on our next attempt. Now, if there's a large gap between the what the log that the follower has and the log that the leader has, this could take quite a few iterations where we just reduce the length of the prefix by one every single time. Um, so you could imagine more efficient ways of doing this, but for now we're just going to keep it not, it's complicated enough as it is, we're not going to overcomplicate it. And we're just going to reduce this sent length by one and then call the replicate log function again. Remember we saw replicate log earlier, and this is going to send all of the log entries that go beyond this sent length. And so this will ensure that 
eventually we will fill in any gap in the log and eventually the follower will be able to apply the new log entries um, because we've sent all of the missing log entries from the leader to the follower. Okay, um, and that is the leader side except for the commit log entries function. So uh, that's the last one that we need to look at. And this one here, uh, it now looks at this act length variable. Remember in the act length variable we recorded, for every follower, the number of log entries that that follower has confirmed as having received. And so here we are now going to start off with uh, the variable commit length. So that is commit length is the number of log entries counted from the start of the log that we have already committed. And now we want to see if there are any additional log entries that are also ready to be committed. And so as long as commit length is, is less than uh, the length of the log, uh, we initialize x to zero and then this x uh, variable will count how, from how many nodes, from how many followers, uh, including and, and also the leader, we have an acknowledgement. And so we are going to go through all of the nodes in the system, uh, the leader and all of the followers, and we're going to check the act length variable for each of those nodes. And if its value is greater than the commit length, then that means from the point of view of that particular node, it's okay to move the, the commit length forward. So it has already acknowledged more log entries beyond the existing commit length. And so we're going to count that as an acknowledgement. And now we're going to see if the number of acknowledgements that we've received for the log entry at index commit length, if that is greater than a majority, then it's ready for, uh, for that log entry to be committed. And so in this case, we're now going to the, do the total order broadcast delivery of the log ent of the message at the log entry with index commit length. That's going to be delivered to the application. This is on the leader. And we're going to increment the value of the commit length uh, variable. And this new variable will then be sent out to all of the followers the next time we call the replicate log function. And so we keep going around this loop here and uh, committing log entries as long as we can reach this majority quorum. If at some point then we reach the point where we don't have a majority quorum of acknowledgements yet, then we just break out of the loop because that means we have to wait for more log response messages um, before we can uh, do further commits. And that's it. That is the uh, entirety of the Raft consensus algorithm. I hope you were able to follow it. I know it's a huge amount of detail, but um, I thought it's, you know, it's really interesting to see that interplay between the leaders and the followers, always having to check the term number and so on. Um, but you can see how uh, by very carefully sequencing all of the things, it is possible to actually achieve something like total order broadcast. That's all for this lecture. See you next time.